Thank you for tuning into this episode of Walden Wall Art. And today I'm going to teach you how to scan like a comic book for professional. Uh, it's how to scan pages for Marvel Comics, DC Comics, or if you're working with any publishers, uh, how to scan them and get them ready for uh, publishing. Uh, so a little bit about me. My name is Walden Wong. I'm a comic book artist for Marvel and DC Comics. You can check out more of my work on my website. It's waldenwallart.com. Over there, there's a lot of things that you can look at, such as a blog, news, a lot of news galleries and all that stuff. Lots, lots of fun stuff here. And this was a question from one of my patrons. He asked, Walden, well, when I'm scanning artwork and I have some blue in there, how do I get rid of that blue? And what if I'm scanning uh, two pages, how do I connect them? So I'm, I'm gonna show you here on this video how to do that. So if you're interested in being one of my Patreon, over on my Patreon I have different tiers. Tiers to show support for watching, for me making these videos for you, as well as different mentorship tiers, such as inking, uh, lettering, coloring, and things like that. And if you have any questions on comic books uh, or whatever questions that I think is like important that everyone can learn from, I'll make videos such as this one for you. So without further ado, I'm going to show you how to scan pages like a comic book professional. Here we go. First thing we do, I use Photoshop. That's the only scanning uh, software that I use. So right here on Photoshop, we have a uh, file. And this is the first thing we do, file. We go to import, and then we go to WIA support. Okay, once you're here, you click start. And then you choose your scanner that you have connected to your printer. Uh, it could be 11 by 17, and a half by 11, or whatever scanner. Uh, just make sure your scanner is turned on and everything's connected and you have your artwork on this uh, flatbed scanner. And then you click OK. Once you click OK, you're gonna have all these choices. You have color picture, grayscale picture, black and white picture, as well as custom. Now, all of these work, but some of these are not as good as a custom. So when you're doing a custom, you can have a higher resolution. If I use a color picture, it'll scan color, but it's not gonna pick up as much information as you need. So what I usually do as a comic book artist, we scan at custom setting, and we set that setting to 600 DPI. You can click on these arrows and then choose whatever you like. Sometimes you have 200 or, or 400. I usually like scanning at 600. Uh, anything more than that is just uh, too much information. Okay, 600, and sometimes a publisher only needs like 400 DPI or 300 DPI. Still, you still scan at 600 DPI and then reduce the resolution after scanning at 600 DPI. It's better to scan higher resolution and reduce it and you still have all the image rather than scanning at a low resolution and boosting it up. That When you do that, all the artwork on your uh, scan is gonna be pixelated. Right here where it says picture type, always choose color picture. I know there's a grayscale setting and there's a black and white picture. It's a little kind of, um, you're thinking, well, my comic book work is black and white. Why don't I just scan in black and white? And the reason for that is because when you scan in black and white, it's not gonna pick up all the information. So click color picture and then click okay. And once you click okay, uh, just have this at the full image. If you have a eight and a half by 11, scan all that. Um, maybe scan the top half of uh, one side or scan the bottom half of one page. Or if you have a double page spread, scan the left side, Full, full area right here, and then scan the other side full area here. So click scan, and then it's gonna take a little bit of time, and the scanning process for a color image at 65 does take a while. So just sit back, relax for a little bit, and then let the scanning be done, okay? So while it's scanning, uh, I'm gonna talk about uh, some of the process of scanning. Um, a lot of times, as a comic book artist, you're scanning double page spreads. And double, double page spreads, they're like 22 by 17 in size, so they're pretty big. So what we do is we'll scan the left side by itself first, and then we'll scan the right side by itself, and then we piece them together in Photoshop. Uh, some of the artists out there, they don't even have an 11 by 17 scanner. So what they'll do is they'll have a regular eight and a half by 11, so they can scan the top part, and then scan the bottom part, and then piece them together, which is what I'm gonna show you guys how to do. Okay, so let's just say everything is all scanned. I'm just gonna turn this uh, little image off. And then I'm gonna take two images that's pre-scanned, while open, and say I have these two images. Let's say I scan them twice, and then now I have the top half and the bottom half. How do I piece them together? Okay, so once I have this image, I'm gonna find out the image size of the scan. So right here, I go to image, image size, and right here I have 19 by 15. And then the height of this, this is what I'm gonna focus on. Because this scan is 19 by 15, I'll check the other scan to make sure it's the same. Image, image size, 
20 by 15. So the height 15, uh, roughly 15. So the height is uh, 15 on this one. Image, image size, let me check the other one. That was also 15, uh, roughly 16. So I'm gonna double that up right over here. I'm gonna go to image. So I'm gonna take this canvas, I'm gonna double up the size, image, image size, and then right here, actually, I'm gonna go to canvas size. And instead of doubling up the image, I'm gonna double up the canvas. Canvas is a white paper background. Image, canvas size. And then earlier, uh, we had it at um, 16, so 16 times two is roughly 32. So I'm gonna type in 32. And then you have this, this little dot here. This is the anchor point. So I want more paper on the bottom because this is the top side of the double page spread. So what I'll do is I'll click this little circle on the top and when I click OK, you're gonna get extra paper on the bottom, see? So when I click a Control Zero, you're gonna see that whole spread, like uh, the top part here. Then I'll go over here, I'll take the bottom part and then I'll, I'll s highlight them. I'll use my Marque tool, I'll select that area right over here. But before I do that, I wanna make sure my panels are aligned. Sometimes if it's not aligned, you scatter, you piece them together, it's gonna be misaligned. So right here, I'm gonna use the ruler tool, uh, which is this one, and then I'm gonna make sure everything is aligned. So I'm gonna click on right over here, I'll draw this line, and then I'll bring this right over here, click here. Make sure you follow that line. Make sure it's uh, parallel to the panel. Okay, actually make that go closer. I'll zoom in, control, control plus, and then I'll use my ruler, I'll click on here, and then I'll just measure maybe like that, okay? And I'll go to image, image rotation, and then right here, arbitrary. This calculates what I need to shift it, rotate, in order to give it a perfect uh, 90 degree angle. I'll click okay. And then now this is parallel. So if I took this image and I will move it to the side, you see how that's aligned to the left over here? Okay, and I'm gonna do that the same for the other one to make sure it's uh, perfectly 90 degrees uh, uh, parallel to the side. So I'll use my ruler tool and I'll click on here. I'll draw a line right over here and then I'll go to image, image rotation and then arbitrary. And then right here, I'll get 28 degrees clockwise. The computer Photoshop calculates for me. And then now everything is perfectly aligned um, vertically. So now that I have that perfectly aligned, okay, so I'm gonna take this image right over here. I'm gonna click Control Zero so I can see the whole image. Now I'll use my Marque tool. I'll select this area right over here. I'll select it right to where the artwork is, right there, okay? Okay, and now I'll click Control C. And then I'll go back to the first image and I click Control V. Now I have this image, I'm gonna paste it right here. Okay, looks like the scan on this was a little bit too large. So it looks like uh, Paul, uh, one of my patrons who uh, scanned this, uh, is a little bit larger. So what I'm actually, yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a little bit transforming to fit it back in there. So I get Control T to transform. And then right here, I'll take the corner. Now, with, depending on which version of Photoshop you have, sometimes you may need to press the shift key in order to keep the ratio the same. If not, uh, you may have to unclick the shift key. So here, I'm gonna move this in, make sure everything aligns right over here. I'll use my nudge key, my arrow keys to make sure it fits. Now, at, in this in this case, I'm gonna, looks like a, looks like a Paul um, inked two pieces separately and does a little bit of a over artwork. So I'm gonna go over here, move up a little bit. I'm gonna look at this area, make sure it aligns. Okay, there is no real quick magical formula to like have all that snap together. You're just gonna remove things around a little bit. Okay, let me move this back to that corner. Click Z to zoom in. I'll use V right over here. It looks like a little bit off. Some things are a little bit off over here. Okay, I'm gonna transform that and make sure this fits a little bit better. Control T, select all. Can move this in a little bit like this. Okay, move it up, nudge it, use your arrow keys. Okay, I'm just gonna look at these. Let's see, Control T, move it in, move it back up. Okay, make sure the panel board on the right matches. And then now that I have that, I'm gonna use, make sure the other side matches. Okay, Control T, bring this in a little bit. This is the only way. If your scanner scans at a certain different percentage, you're gonna have to like uh, adjust uh, for what's missing. Okay, so I'm gonna move all of this up by 
clicking the move tool, which is uh, this thing right here, or the letter V on Photoshop, I just move it higher and make sure it matches. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at Dr. Doom's cape over there. Okay, right over there. Okay, so this is this is as close. Uh, it's because uh, this was inked on two separate pages and there was some extra ink that was a little bit different. The only way to fix this is to kind of touch it up on Photoshop. Yeah, it wasn't done on one page. I, I could tell be, because uh, right here, this line is different than that line. So it wasn't one full image. Like this line over here goes up, this one doesn't go up. So we can just go back here and touch up a little bit. Okay, it looks like that. that's fairly close. I'm gonna move across here. It looks like there's a window here and there's no window there. And I'm gonna look over here. So right here, this is very close. And then once I'm done with that, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna flatten everything. Cause right now you have two separate uh, layers. This layer, and then you have this layer, okay? I'm gonna remove, take my erase tool and erase some of the lines on this image because I'm gonna get rid of that, okay? Maybe if I erase some of that, um, stuff will touch up, uh, such will match up a little better. Okay, it looks like, uh, yeah, it's not really matching up 100%. So we're gonna do something called content aware to see if we can fix that. So right here, right now, I'm gonna flatten everything. Layer, flatten. Okay, so right now is it one image. I'm gonna zoom in closer. I'm gonna do some content aware. If content aware doesn't work, we're gonna have to do our touch up. So what I'll do is I'll select the certain area that I wanna adjust, I'll click Delete, and right here, instead of white or black, I'll go to Content Aware, hoping that Photoshop can do the math and connect those for me. Nope, it's not gonna work. So in this case, uh, we're gonna have to go in there and touch up the work. So so if you're working with, uh, if you're working with um, one image, scanning twice is okay, but if you're, if you're inking two separate images and you try to piece them together, this is the only way. Yeah, you're printing two, like the top portion and you're scanning the bottom portion. So what I'm doing is I'm just gonna go in there and just redraw some of the stuff um, on Photoshop digitally and just to fix up all that. So I'll use my um, black and white key and then I'm just gonna go around and just fix up all that. Okay, so right here I'm gonna do this, touch up this part, use my brush. Fill that in, okay. Fill this in, get, get a larger brush. I'm gonna go here and use my round, round, round pressure brush. This gives me more control. I wanna make the lines a little bit cleaner over here. Okay, X, clean this up. Clean this up right here and then connect this one here. So this is more post-production work right here. Okay, making sure everything kind of aligns. So right here, there's a little bit that we want to redraw, remove some of that, okay, redraw some of this. There's just no easy way to do this, okay? Okay, so let's just say I have all of that nicely drawn and retouched. And we fix this, fix this, and then remove some of that that doesn't belong there, redraw some of this. So having a little bit, uh, touch up some of those lines that were missing in the background here, I'll use the uh, clone tool, I'll select this area. Okay, so right here, the clone tool, select, let's see, oops, select this area and just clone up, redraw some of that. Okay, right here, redraw some of this area, with the brush tool, things that doesn't belong there, kind of erase, redraw this one. That's a little bit too long, too dark. Use the clone tool, align, align that part back up, select, and then just clone downwards. Just this right over here, redraw some of that, okay? And redraw some of this. Uh, adjust the tip of the brush by pressing your bracket keys when you're using the pin tool. Okay, so this, we don't need that, we erase that. So I'm just gonna go all the way across and then just kind of like redraw lines that doesn't belong or, or missing lines. See that missing bit over there? I'm just gonna redraw. Okay, this one, I'm gonna redraw and add it in here. Redraw some of that thin line. Okay, um, this flame here, uh, I'm gonna erase that building in the background, that little window here. And then I'm gonna redraw some of the, the fire, cause that's easier to draw. Okay, this one matches up. Okay, there's a little bit off over here. I'm just gonna taper in some of the lines and then break up some of those lines, just, just to have it consistent. Okay, we erase some of this for consistency. So yeah, it being able to use Photoshop and then touching up some of your work, it's pretty good. Yeah, it comes in handy. Okay, I'm gonna continue. 
fixing all of this. Okay, uh, this is a matchup. Easier to, for me to use a brush tool and then just connect here. Now, now you notice when I'm using a brush tool, when I'm making, it's gonna be completely black. What you wanna do is you wanna sample the color so you have the same black tones. That way it's fairly close. We select here. Okay, let me go here. Go Control Z, Control my bracket, erase this. Okay, there. This is all the way, and then I'm going to erase some of this, this extra thicker line, just so everything matches. Erase this line. Okay, so that's just some uh, Photoshop uh, touch-up work over here. Clone this downwards. Okay, clone this one right over here. Continue cloning there. So I zoom back, zoom back, and then now the double page spread uh, connects. So what the next question was, okay, once I have this, I'm gonna save this, okay? I'm gonna go to File, Save, Always Save Your Work. We save as uh, Walden Connected. Connected, okay? So I connected the page, I did some art touch up. Now you'll see here, this image right over here, uh, we don't need this anymore, we're gonna delete this. This image right here is RGB, red, green, blue. It's, it's a color file. So. My Patreon asked, Paul asked, how do I get rid of the color, like instead of using the erase tool, instead of just erasing it like that, how do I get rid of it? So what I would do is I'll use the magic wand, which is this thing that looks like a magic wand with little stars over here, or you can click the letter W, uh, quick key, uh, W, W for wand. And then you can select, you can select the blues. You see how I'm selecting the blues? If you have contiguous on, it only selects that area. However, if you have that unclick, it will select everything that's that same color. So I'll unclick contiguous, and then right here, I'll click on the blue area. So it selects everything that's the same blue, okay? Even though if it's like uh, further away somewhere else, it selects everything. Once you have that selected, I'm just gonna collect, I'm gonna zoom back out so you all can see this. Once I have everything selected, I'll click delete, and right here, the contents, you wanna choose white, okay? So right over here, make sure you select white, and then click OK. Once you click OK, it removes all the white completely, okay? So right over here, look, no more blue. Everything is just black and white, okay? I'm gonna go in here to show you the difference from before and after, so you can see the difference. I'm gonna go to my history bar right here, and then before, before the uh, the removal of the blues, especially you see a lot of blues on his feet and some of his legs, and then the removal. So that's how you remove blue lines, okay? Once you have that, I'm gonna scan this again. I'm gonna save this again, file, save as. I'm gonna save this as well and connect it, no blues. Blues. And that's how I go about um, scanning artwork for professional, but we're not done yet. Okay, I, I, sh I should mention, once you're done scanning, it's still in RGB. What we want to do is we're going to convert it to grayscale. So we're gonna go to image, mode, grayscale. Okay, once this is grayscale, now it's a black and white image. In this black and white image, sometimes you're gonna work with a publisher that only needs 400 DPI or 300 or nothing more than 600. If you have a publisher that wants 600 DPI, um, that's great, uh, higher resolution, more image, but it's just gonna take more uh, time to upload to their client server or email them. If you wanna reduce this to 600 DPI, very easy, you're just gonna go to image, image size, right over here, and right here, originally, I mean, this was at 150. Uh, this, just to say, originally I scanned it was 600. It was 600. This all you have to do was is uh, type in 400. Okay, so just go in 400 and then click OK, and then it will reduce from 600 DPI to 400 DPI. Okay, earlier I scanned, I was teaching you guys how to scan at 600 DPI, but this file was sent to me uh, from Paul. He scanned it at 150, so it was a little bit smaller, okay? You can also reduce your uh, resolution image, image size. You can reduce the size of this. Say you're emailing an editor for showing, or emailing a friend that they just wanna look at it. Instead of sending them such a large file at, uh, with 19.36, you can send it at maybe five inches by whatever. So just type this, five inches by eight inches tall. And then uh, computer Photoshop will do the calculations for you, okay? And there we have it. And then now you see I have extra paper. I want to crop it, so that's easy. Take the marquee tool, select your artwork size, and then you just go to image, and then crop. Now few, I know some of you are new to this and then you never done Photoshop work or I remember when I first started using Photoshop, I had a Photoshop and I just didn't know how to scan it. Feel free to rewind the video and then follow the steps. And if you have questions, comment down below and I'll uh, walk you through and I'll explain 
the process of working Photoshop. Photoshop is a fun art tool to use, but I know in the beginning it does take a little bit of time to learn. So that's how I take a, a, a artwork to connect both of them together and make the artwork piece together. And once it's connected, uh, I'll remove the blue lines uh, by using the magic wand. After I remove the blue, blue lines, I'll click from a color file and I'll convert it into a grayscale file and then I'll send it to the publishers like over here. So if you have any questions, comment down below. Uh, please check out my website. My website is wallwallart.com. And if you're interested in uh, being one of my patrons and learning more uh, directly from me, uh, usually I'll talk to all my patrons. Uh, check out my Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash wallwallart. And there's a lot of different tiers that you can choose from. So thank you for watching this video. If you have any comments, uh, comment down below. If there's any type of videos that you're interested in seeing, let me know and I'll make those videos for you. Take care and have a good day. Bye-bye.